to another episode of Sipping and Tripping. I'm your host, Mark Tell. How y'all doing today? Chad, um, first of all, thank you to everybody who's tuning in from wherever. If it's from my hometown to across the pond, across the sea, all over the world. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for everybody who consecutively tunes in. Um, it means a lot. It really do. It really, 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 really means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Um, this is one of the toughest couple weeks I've been having. Personally, um, I'm trying to get it together, y'all. I'm trying to get it together. We're going through some things. I really don't want to talk about them prematurely. But, you know, when we get over the hurdle, over the hump, hopefully in a couple more weeks, we're going to talk about this, okay? So tonight I'm drinking some water. Um, this is really good water. I forget how good Fiji water is. This is not an endorsement, okay? This is not an endorsement. Yeah. I'm really surprised I like it because it's, I want to say it's like a spring water and I like filtered water, but I like it. <laughs> um, so, Emmy nominations are out. There are so many amazing people who are nominated for Emmys this year. Um, congratulations to all the winners and everybody nominated. MJ Rodriguez is making the news. MJ Rodriguez is one of the stars on the hit show Pose. Produced by Ryan Murphy and I cannot think of her. Um, Jenny Mock. Come on, Jenny Mock. You better come on to my head, Jenny Mock. Jenny Mock and Ronnie Murphy. Um, MJ Rodriguez took history because she's the first trans woman to be nominated for an outstanding award actress award. So that, that's really great. Um, congratulations to MJ Rodriguez. You know, I hope she wins. I really want her to win. But, you know, I think it's one of those things like just being nominated is a win. But we not going to take that as no win. We want her to get her trophy. Y'all, uh, Emmys, give MJ Rodriguez her trophy. Yeah. She she acted her tail off in pose. Um, I don't know who else is in that cat. That was the category, too, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have all the categories and everything up. Make sure you guys are just watching the Emmys when they come out. And congratulations to MJ Rodriguez. Hey, girl. So, there's like a little feud brewing under... It's not even going to be a feud. Okay, so I guess if two people are going at it, that's like a feud. That's like an argument. That's a disagreement. That's a fight. But if one person is popping off and the other person doesn't even know you popping off, I don't know what that's called. That's called craziness, child. Because why are you giving somebody so much energy and they ain't even paying you no mind at all, baby? But anyway, Hazel E is calling out rapper, international star, Cardi B, for copying her daughter's birthday party. So, Hazel E has a daughter. Cardi B has a daughter. I guess Hazel E had a princess birthday party for her daughter. And... She said Cardi B copied the, the party all the way down, all the way down from the wardrobe to outfits. Now, I'm not going to lie. There are a lot of similarities in between the two parties, but maybe they had, they had a horse and carriage and, you know, KZ had a horse and carriage and I guess like it was like the same color theme and same kind of like situations going on. Um, but let's keep it real. One was the upper, bigger birthday party, cost lots of money. The other one was like the great value version. If you don't know what great value is, that means generic. And that's what Shane Hazel E, but it's like sometimes people hire the same party planners, or maybe the party planner was trained by the other party planner. I don't think it's, it's a kid's party. You know how many people have been doing? Um, princess parties for kids 
A lot. It's, it's been going on, it's been going on, it's been going on. So I don't understand why is it such an issue. Like, did the babies have fun on their birthday? They did? Okay, let's, let's keep moving. Uh, Hazel E., you do a lot of things for attention. But this right here, I guess if I attach my name to Cardi B, honey, I'll make it to the shade room. Maybe love com. if ain't nothing else going on. Because B. Scott ain't got time for all. That was shenanigans, okay? Because it ain't talking about nothing. But Hazel E, get get somewhere and just sit down, girl. Go back to loving hip all day, I want you. Find something to do. Because I'm tired of your shenanigans, girl. You just always on some bull crap. Speaking of somebody else who always on bull crap, I hate to even go there with this person. But I have to. I have to today. You can love somebody, but you can still correct them. And today is the day where we're going to have to correct Miss Wendy Williams, child, because she has been getting out of control here lately, and it's too much going on. So, Wendy, you got to get it together, girl. First of all, you're you're showing up to your show looking very disheveled, very uncoherative. Um, you don't really know what's going on. You're interviewing, child. The people have to take, like, you interviewing me, but I'm controlling the interview. You know what I'm saying? It is like you don't know what you're talking about. You're getting people mixed up. You get a whole prompter right there. Like, well, you can't read the prompter. Some days look like you're drunk, allegedly. Some days look like you're high, allegedly. Today, with the end of the show, you just jump up and you run your ass up out of there. And I'm just like, Wendy, if you don't sit your ass down and finish your show, like, what is wrong with you? It's Wendy. <laughs> well, a famous TikTok person had passed away, and she built the story up talking about what exactly happened well she was talking about how the guy had so many followers more than her but she has more on instagram and like the audience are like on her side like oh yeah 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 and then she goes oh well he was murdered so the audience are you know they're gasping they're shocked like how you gonna build us up to talk mess about this person but then stop come on girl it didn't make sense and it makes sense. You can't mind manipulate your audiences to be on you one way and then jump the quarter because they didn't know who the young boy was. Well, the young boy family is now trying to get a campaign together to get her canceled, which, I mean, many have came to get Wendy canceled. It has not happened. And I don't think this is going to be the thing to get her canceled because I'm probably the last person talking about it, honestly. But Wendy, is it, she needs to watch what she's saying. She needs to be more educated. Whoever is around her, they need to make sure she go. She needs AA. I think during the summer break, she needs to really go to rehab. It needs to be one of those things. If you want your job, you want to continue to work, you have to go to rehab. Because now I'm starting to see why Kevin had you up in that darn rehab, girl. I'm starting to see it. Or Calvin. I mean, let's keep it real. When you were a Calvin, you could get on there, you could do the show, you were a straight shooter, you were talking, you were on, you were present, you were coherent. I'm not trying to say that man was a good man because we know, although he wasn't. However, it wasn't what it is now today. It's a mess, girl. There's a new show coming out, I believe, on HBO called F Boy Summer. Now, everybody should know what an F Boy is. An F Boy, you take the F. Well, a U N K behind the F. Fuck boy, summer. Wendy was like, "Oh, I didn't know that. That's what it meant. I had to be reminded. I thought it meant something else. I thought the F F boy meant something else." And I'm like, "What did you think F boy was?" I was confused, but I'm like, Wendy probably just doing something, whatever. It didn't even dawn on me to what she meant until she started talking and talking about most of the guys on the show are probably gay. Mm -hmm. F boy, summer. And I said, "Oh, you meant the oh." The big F. So the gays. The F. Wendy! I'm not going to keep talking about you, Wendy, not today, Miss Girlfriend, but you need to get your S-H-I-T together. You really do. Because this don't make no sense. That you are... you. I mean, you're going to lose your... The gays are your biggest fans, boy. Your, your biggest fan base. And how can you um continue to continue to just dog us and... I mean, it's all. I mean, we already embraced the how you doing, which we know how you doing came about you calling people in the industry, you know, gay. But we know we embrace the how you doing. We embrace you. We embrace your flaws and everything. But now it's it's getting hard 
to sit up here and have your back all the time. Hey, girl, get your shit together, Miss Wendy Williams. Um, Britney Spears has won a little milestone in court, y'all. It just happened. This is exclusively from me to lovebscott.com. Okay, y'all, we got some. Ooh, we got so much news coming out right now. Okay, hold on. We got so much news going on right now. So we're going to get to the first part right here. Is shall, Okay, Miss Britney Spears, she won a small legal battle in court. She was a, she's allowed, she's being allowed to be able to pick her own counsel. You know, before her she had to have counsel prescribed to her from the people she was going up against. So I mean, it's like how you helping me but then they picking you out. Girl, bye. Well, things are starting to look up Britney Spears for Britney Spears when it comes to her ongoing fight to be released from her conservatorship. On Wednesday, which is technically today, um, she appeared in court remotely via telephone and pleaded with the judge to have her father, Jamie, F- Jamie Spears, removed from her consor- conservative shift. According to Variety, an emotional Britney Spears said to Judge Brenda Penny, I'm here to get rid of my dad and charge and change him for no sorry excuse me charge him for conservator abuse i want to press charges for abuse on this conservatorship today all of it i'm here now today your honor to remove my dad altogether ultimately judge penny granted that she could hire her own lawyer Brittany has hired matthew rosengert okay hey, hey matthew who was present during a court hearing and said in Britney's defense, this is not working. What is supposed to be at the heart of this has been lost. There is a real question as to why Mr. Spears does not voluntarily step down today. It is, is he here for financial reasons? Well, duh. So, child, we just going to keep on going on up the ladder. So, Britney Spears, she has a small victory in court. We're so happy for you, Brett Brett. So we hope that this and like this this is my thing. I don't think all the strings should be released right away. I feel like it should be like a three year contingency plan to just make sure she gets the right doctors. She's coming off medicine slowly. She's adjusting to life. You know, just bit by bit by bit. In about two three years, then she'd be totally free and can live her life in the best way she wants to be. That is what I think. Um, I was about to, I literally wrote today because I was like, oh, I've been so quiet. What happened to Sharon Osbourne? Like, where is she at? Like, Sharon Osbourne, where are you at? I haven't really heard nothing from her really on TV and the blogs, nothing. I said, like, she done went somewhere and crawled away and got in the bed or something. Girl, get out that bed, baby. It ain't worth it. Um, but just today, it was announced that Jerry O'Connell will be replacing Sharon Osbourne on the talk. Now, the talk, the view, the real are all female led talk shows all female so Jerry Connell would be the only man at the table with four other women this has not happened since we've been on daytime television it has been the all females you got the guys over in the sports so this this is interesting I think maybe there's some shows where it's like half and half I want to say I saw a Fox show before where it was like guys and women but this is interesting. This is really interesting, Jerry O'Connell. Now, I would like it. I would wish that it could be like a balance with Jerry and another guy, and then the ladies, because I feel like just one Jerry. I feel like he's gonna be doing a lot of stuff just for antics and you know shits and giggles and stuff. So, I'm I'm hoping it all works out in a way it's supposed to work out. Congratulations to Jerry O'Connell. Jerry, I'm gonna tell you guys a little story. Jerry O'Connell really holds a very special place in my heart. Um, I was on Twitter and I was like. I'm over here, like, pushing the show. I'm put, taking the link, and I'm putting it on Twitter. I'm putting it on everybody's page. Chad, I didn't get blocked and everything, Chad, for people. Because I'm over here trying to promote this show because I believe it, but I believe in it so much, and it was, yeah. I, I really need to get back to it because I've been so away from promoting the show for a while. But, I mean, when I tell you I was out here promoting this show, and I was moving and shaking and stuff, and when I tell you, Jerry O'Connell, he started retweeting some of my tweets I was sending him. 
about the show. And I'm like, oh my God, this is like an A-list superstar. He's married to Rebecca Romaine. He's on TV. He's hosting Wendy Williams. And he's literally sharing my post. And, you know, it, it takes nothing. It takes zero zero point zero dollars and zero cents to support somebody to help them build their business through their career. Word of mouth. An easy share. An easy like. You know? It changes their the, the algorithm. So, I always love Miss Jerry O'Connor for that. I have not watched a talk. Girl, I can't tell you unless I'm going to watch talk. But, Jerry O'Connor, I will be tuning in to watch you now. So, are y'all ready for this story? So, this is like a two-part story. The first part is, you know, last year, we all went through two phenomenons going on in this world. One, we went through a global pandemic. And two... While we're in that global pandemic, we went through Tiger King. <laughs> Tiger King started off our global pandemic, giving us something to talk about, something to watch, and like, is this real life? What in the Dateline 2020 um, 60 seconds is going on on this show? Check everything, okay? Everything. Well, Amazon Prime had announced that they were doing a series over... The Netflix show, Tiger King, about Joe Exotic. They were going to do a series on it. They were going to get Nicolas Cage to pay, play Joe Exotic. We were so excited. We were so happy. Well, Amazon, I said, it's taking too long for it to come. The the mystique of all of it, and, you know, it's probably gone now. So they just don't want to even do the show, put money in it if we're not going to. Let me tell you something. You put Tiger King on, we're going to watch it. That was the craziest thing ever to boggle our minds. We're going to watch it because we want to see the stuff we done, we did now. Okay? Amazon, y'all y'all missing out. Netflix, hope y'all picked that up. At least give us a movie. Well, so I'm sure Joe Exotic was so upset about that. But he got a little good news today. I'm so sorry, you guys. I don't know why I'm yawning today. I'm so I apologize so much. I, need to, I probably need to start editing videos so I can just edit my yawns out. That'd be so great. Y'all, y'all want me to start editing my videos? Y'all let me know, okay? Tiger King star Joe Exotic is said to be sentenced. Oh, hold on. Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic sentence has been vacated, but he will remain behind bars until he and will be resentenced. Tiger Joe, Joe Exotic is said to be resentenced in his murder for hire and animal cruelty case after appeals court grants. The judge vacates his 22-year sentence. The former Oklahoma zookeeper, whose legal name is Joseph Maldonado Passage, was found guilty in a murder-for-hire plot to kill rival animal rights activist Carol Baskin and was sentenced in 2020 to serve 22 years in prison for that and other crimes, which includes which include killing tigers to make room for bigger cats, at his exotic animal park. According to authorities, stating in July 2016, Montanetto, Joe Exotic, reportedly tried to hire people of whom was undercover FBI agent to murder Baskin, who owns a tiger refuge, which really isn't a refuge, but okay, um, and allegedly, in Florida, and won a multi-million dollar judgment against Maldonado. GW Exotic Animal Memorial Park in Oklahoma. That was Joe's park. Eventually, Joe gave a man three thousand dollars to travel to Oklahoma, travel to to travel from Oklahoma to South Carolina, and on to Florida to kill Basket allegedly, with a promise to pay thousands more after the deed, according to the U.S. Attorney Office. On Wednesday, a germ. On uh, Wednesday, a judge affirmed Miles Nello Pass's conviction but decided to vacate his original... Wait, he said, okay, he affirmed it, but decided to vacate his original sentence in order to resentence. According to the appeals, Passage disputes his conviction, arguing that the court had made an error by allowing Baskin to attend the full trial process and despite her being listed as a government, government witness. Okay, let me tell you about this. Now... In my life, I had to be a witness on court. Now, when you're a witness, you, you have to be outside. You cannot be in the room because then you're hearing other people say stuff. You could be changing your story and, you know, 
added some sugar to it. You know what I'm saying? So you are not supposed to be in there. So that was a big oversight. Wow. The judge agreed with Matt with, with Tucker King, Joe Exotic, appeal stating, although the district court apparently thought that the two murder for hire plots shared a common criminal objective, it mistakenly, although quite understandably, thought that the grouping would not be proper unless they were also, also part of the same course of conduct. This error in interrupting the guidelines require reversal, according to the court. This case is being sent back to Oklahoma City Judge, who has been ordered to group the two counts together for resentencing. So we'll be seeing if Joe will be getting out. Now, Joe will get out. What are they going to do? They're going to talk show? What? Are y'all going to watch it? I'm gonna, I mean, I will watch a couple episodes, but I don't hear nothing about Carol Baskin every darn day. So that's just going to be that on that, okay? Um, but, I mean, if he is innocent, you know, I hope he's out, you know. Maybe he can start a halfway house for the guys getting out, him and Bill Cosby. That's just what I think. That's what I think. Um, we're going to get you. So, okay, let's go to Erica Mena. So, Erica Mena, you, you, if you watch Love & Hip Hop, I literally just took off my series record for Love & Hip Hop. I think I've outgrown Love & Hip Hop. I'm done with Love & Hip Hop. I'm sorry, Mona, but I'm done. I'm done. It's not the same. It doesn't feel the same. It feels very forced. It seems very fake. And I'm just over it. But Erica Mena, who is married to Safari, they just had their second child. Um, you know, she used to date a lady named San Santana. And there was like this account on Instagram that used to always bash San Santana and talk about her. It was a no face account with no followers. And they always was like big Erica Stan. They'd be in the shade room and different sites, just dogging Sin and making her feel horrible. Well, honey, come to find out, that was Erica the whole time. Erica got the second baby. You know, now they want to get their baby's Instagrams. So I guess she didn't feel like making a new Instagram account. So she just used the old one that had no face, no picture, no friends, and put the baby on that one. Well, child, when people started seeing their comments, the name changed and the face changed. Child, instantly... When they started talking about her and screenshotting, honey, Erica took that whole page down and deleted it, and she been mom's child. Now she's going to come out and show pictures of the baby and stuff. Girl, they ain't forgot about you. I'm going to tell y'all something. You do not have to get on the internet and make somebody else feel bad because you are. If somebody is happy, let them be happy. They bad, let them be mad. Do not start making all these fake profiles and stuff. For what? And Erica, man, you is grown. You is a grown lady. You was a grown lady. You got a teenage son. What are you teaching him? What kind of mother are you? Child, you need to get your stuff together. Because that don't make no cotton picking sense right there. No, it don't. Um, Cardi B. A judge that missed a lawsuit against Cardi B filed by a blogger. Cardi is about to proceed with a defamation suit. Come on, Cardi. And she just announced... She, she told you yesterday she had announcement for us today. She said she was so nervous. I knew it was. I thought actually I thought it was gonna be a new album she was announcing, but I was wrong. It's actually a new single she is announcing, and she will be having a single with Normani. So Cardi and Normani will be making a new song together, and the song is called Wild. It's called Wild stuff, I believe. Wild side, excuse me. Wild side. Cardi B and Normani. They got hair. All over them and the hair as the outfits. It looks good. I'm excited to hear what this song is going to sound like. So we are excited um, to see what this got going on right here. Okay. So Cardi B. Hey, girl. You know, that's my girl. You know, I love me some Cardi B. I just love the fact that somebody from the bottom made it to the top. Somebody who was counted again, counted out counted against, had everything stacked up against them. It could have been doing other things in life, but God said, nope. This because this is the path you want does not mean this is the journey you're going to stay on. Oh, I just spoke something to myself. Just because it's the path you're on right now does not mean this is the journey you're going to stay on. And he saw fit to take her and just shake her off and then put her on Vogue and put her on these different magazines and covers and give her this life that a lot of people might envy. I don't envy it because I know God about to do the same thing for me. I'm in my meantime right now. Y'all know about that meantime? <laughs> I'm in my meantime. My, which, which means that I'm in between my blessings. 
which means I should be doing everything I can do right now and making myself better. So when it is my time, I can fly. How you doing? Now, the 11 the Housewives of Atlanta are having some issues with production. Child, they're saying that they don't know if Portia wants to return. She's shooting a, a, her eight episode um, series right now, showcasing her life and her fiance, who used to be married to Fallon. More than, they said more than likely Cynthia Bailey would not be returning as a housewife. They said for sure they want Kenya and Candy, which Candy was almost out, but I guess they said they need her. It's been rumored that Sheree is coming back. They're actually considering bringing Marlo in as a housewife for the first time. They don't think Drew, Drew is coming back, and they do not want Latoya Ali. They say it's been so hard to get women on the show because some women don't, you know, they don't fit in, they don't mesh, or, you know, people want these fake storylines, you know. It's a whole lot. Bravo, get Nini, get Phaedra. Say whatever you got to say to Portia and get this show underway. Now, but if you need some help, let me help you out real quick. Kiki Wyatt, Selena Johnson. You know, the whole show out, um, R&B Divas that didn't, you know, it's not there no more. Um, Monifa. You got all, you got all this talent, all these people in Atlanta that y'all can be getting. So I'm going to need y'all to get it together over there, Miss Bravo. Because uh, um, Atlanta was the hottest thing popping when it was time to pop. So if y'all let Atlanta fall through the cracks, it's your own fault. Because you're not going out and getting the right people to be on the show. Kiki White is going to read. She's funny. She's hilarious. She stands by what she believes in, okay? She's going to say stuff that is wrong. But she's going to come back. You got Lisa Ray. She's, she'll be great for the show. Um, shoot the brat. Has a whole wife now. You know, her and Portia are friends. Maybe she could be a friend of the show. Y'all better get it together now. Also, who needs to get it together? I want to know what y'all's opinion is about this. Kim and Kyle Richards from the Real Beverly Hills. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. What is wrong with me today, y'all? <laughs> so, um, this is a question. Can your sibling live in your house rent-free and not talk to you? So, Kim is living in one of Kyle's old properties, but she changed her phone number. She doesn't talk to Kyle, and she really don't want to do with Kyle right now, but she lives there rent-free and don't pay no bills. You're not about to be living under my my roof, not paying no bills, not talking to me. I'm sorry. If I call and I say hi, hello, you better say hi, hello back. You ain't got to do all that in-depth talking, but you're going to talk to me, girl. What you got going on with you? What, you I mean... But then again, it shows a lot about Kyle's character. Like, damn, Kyle, you're you're so you're nice and you're sweet, because that is a good dresser. So I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't know, but I I, can't, I don't know. I don't think I'm that nice. I ain't that nice. That's that's what I'm not. I'm not that nice. Nope. So, chill. Make sure you guys we tune in. I think tonight or Friday. Listen to this new Cardi B and Normani song called Wild Side. Um, that's on the. I ain't said this in so long. You ready? Download alert. <laughs> I haven't said that in forever. Oh, I missed that. Um, thank you guys. This has did so much more for me than you guys even know. I needed to get here and do this show tonight. Um, my spirit has been heavy. My energy's been low. But this show right here, it really makes my week go by. It really gets me going. It gets me moving. And I just thank everybody for listening and just supporting. Um, if you guys want to know what I'm watching right now, I'm watching this new series. Oh, it's not a new series, honey. Y'all probably already been watching. Y'all ain't told me to watch it. How about that? I'm watching a series called The Handmaid Tales. I'm in love. It is so good. It is so good so far. I'm on season one, episode nine. I'm about to finish this episode and I'm about to go home and get in the bed, okay? All right. I have a busy, 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 busy day tomorrow. But I'll be back next week. I'm going to have so much energy. And I'm going to have a special guest possibly next week. We're going to see. I'm going to work on getting a special guest so we can come up here. We can vibe. We can chill. We can get some shenanigans going. We can get the morale up. Get it moving. Get it shaking. Get it grooving. Um, if I leave you with nothing, let me leave you with this. Love yourself without remorse, without holding back. Just love yourself. Love yourself so passionately. 
Because when you love yourself, other people know how to love you. When you don't love yourself enough, people can decide, they can decide how they want to love you and how much is enough and what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. Love yourself so much that if somebody coming with some fake love and all that stuff, they can't even stay around you. They can't even stay in front of you because you're just so strong on your own, okay? Don't let your looks, your weight, your situation get in the way. You're in the you're in the perfect position you're in right now. It's not it may not be where you think you're supposed to be, but it's where God has you at, okay? Live and let live. Love and just be free. Love yourself immensely. Um and, and when you have trouble loving yourself, just write down everything you love about yourself. And then write the things down you don't love about yourself. The things you don't love about yourself, we're not gonna look at it every day. We're not gonna dwell on it. But start doing stuff to increase love in those departments of your life. Ooh, I don't love I don't like my hair. I hate my hair. I hate my hair. Okay, well, I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna get a new shampoo. I'm gonna get a new conditioner or I'm gonna get a new beautician or a new barber. Oh, I'm gonna lose weight, I wanna lose weight, I'm so big, I'm so big. That's me, I'm talking to myself right now, okay? Um Okay, well, instead of eating some cake tonight, um, get you some fruits, get you some vegetables. Instead of doing this, let's do that. You know, just let's start changing our circle, our circumstances. Let's not let our circumstances hold us back and keep us from loving ourselves in the right way. Because when we don't love ourselves the right way, people, they can dictate how we take love, okay? Um, I love you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in another week. Tell a friend, tell a coworker, tell a loved one. Tell somebody, baby. Um... I'm on all social media platforms, Sipping and Tripping Podcast. Um, find me, follow me. I like you. I love you. I love you. All right, y'all. I love you. I ain't gonna lie. I love you. Um, thank you so much. This has been so much healing for me. Thank you guys. And I'll see you guys all next week on Sipping and Tripping. Sipping and Tripping it. Sipping and Tripping it. Yeah. Sipping and Tripping it. Sipping and Tripping it. Sipping and Tripping it. Sipping and Tripping it. Yeah. Then you are my son. Sipping and Tripping it. Sipping and Tripping it. Sipping and Tripping it.